In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. Good morning. It's so good to see all of you. We continue on the theme that the church started last week. We celebrated the Pentecost, the day, the 50th day after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, when all the disciples gathering together, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit as a tongue of fire on each and every one of them. That Holy Spirit that was promised to them so that they can persevere through the difficulties of life that they were expected to face before they can spread out the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we were reminded also last week that we also receive the same, the very same Holy Spirit. We receive the tongue of fire when we were baptized and chrismated and how our, the goal of our life is actually to activate this grace and so that we can live our life as Christians even today and to follow in the footsteps of the disciples and we ourselves, like them, bring the good news of Christ to the entire world. So the first Sunday after Pentecost, today, we have our, version of our, our Orthodox version of Halloween. Actually, in the beginning of summer, the church celebrates all the saints today on the first Sunday after Pentecost. And on this day, we not only remember the saints that we know of, we remember the saints that we do not know of. We remember all the regular people who lived a holy life and probably they did not come into the light because our church believes that there are so many people who might be living a holy life and it just happened. This is not about being famous or being known to everyone as long as God knows of them and that's enough. And so today we are reminded that there are so many other people whom we might not know, but they have lived a holy life and God recognizes them. And so we celebrate all those who persevered through the challenges of the life that they lived, whether it is boring or annoying or just the mundane days, day-to-day -day things, they still were able to persevere through those and to live a holy life. So through them, we take an inspiration from them that we also have to be living a holy life. The goal of our life is actually to reflect Christ through our daily activities in the regular and mundane and boring that we have to bring Christ to the entire world because that's what being Christian means. And because being Christian is not a badge of honor, this is something that we should take seriously and reflect on their lives so that our life will be in their footsteps depending on our own circumstances. And the ultimate goal is for our faces to be painted on the walls of this church and probably on future churches because our life was inspirational enough for people who knew about us and who lived among us. Now, some people might say, that's crazy, right? I'm asked to be a holy person and expect my face to be depicted here. Yes, because we have misconceptions about what holiness is. We think holiness is about being magical and doing something extraordinary and doing miracles. But actually, the one miracle that we're asked to do is to bring Christ to the world. That's it. We don't need to make miracles or heal people. It's very simple. And that we, and every one of us, holiness is not about doing, doing miracles, but actually it's about having Christ in us in the midst of the boring and mundane of our daily lives. We're not asked to do something unusual. That's why in the epistle that we just heard, we heard of all the people throughout the centuries before Christ who were holy people because they suffered for their faith, because they persevered. We don't hear anything about miracles. 
we hear about perseverance, about a life that was focused on the faith and then continued to bring glory to God. And then through them, although they were in the Old Testament, Christ was able to be born to a, the world where it was prepared for him to come and to preach to it. And so in our challenging lives, the whole thing that we need to do is to reflect the image of Christ that is imprinted in us. It is there. It's, it got a little bit dirty, but all we need through the challenges of life, but also, also through the grace of the Holy Spirit to clean it up so it reflects to the world and through, so that the world will know that we are Christians when we are filled with Christ. Now, the gospel that we heard also talks about priorities and probably there should be one priority. I was reminded that in English until very recently there was no plural for priority. There was nothing called priorities. It was always priority. And then because of how busy we, we became, we added the S at the end so that we can be distracted as much as possible about all the priorities that we set for ourselves in our lives. But the Gospel reading is reminding us that we can only love Christ to the maximum. That's what we are asked to. We cannot love anyone else as much as we love Christ. And please remember, this is not about emotions. This is about priority. To remember that the only priority that we have is Christ and our love to our family and friends comes out of that love to Christ. And to remember that anything in our life even our love to our families should not take us away from Christ. So it's about commitment to being witnesses to Christ even when we have other responsibilities. It's not emotions because it's a choice. It's work. It's commitment, which means that we have to do what the church describes for us so that we can be focused all the days of our lives. And those of us who are very, very busy know what it means to be focused when you cannot be focused on anything. You are distracted and you're pulled in too many directions. So when the church asks us to pray, to fast, to read, to learn, to read the Bible, to do almsgiving, all of these are for us to help us stay focused on what we are here for. I'll give you an example. Some people say, oh, I don't need fasting. This is an old-fashioned way of doing religion. You should not fast. Now we are in the 21st century. We don't need fasting. But here's a very basic example. If you cannot control what comes through your mouth, so how can you control what is happening inside your mind? If this very simple, practical, physical thing that we can do, we are not able to do, for any excuse that we may have, then how can we control all the things that happen in our minds and take us away every minute of our days? The very simple example, who of you will trust a bus driver, a school bus driver, who has a very tainted um, record of driving their own small car? No one. If you cannot drive a small car safely, I will not trust you to drive a bus, a school bus, and take my children to school. So if you cannot do the small thing, you cannot do the big thing. And this commitment, again, is not emotional, because we have to love Christ before everything else. And we need to do the work that will keep us focused on Christ. This is not just, I love Christ, my faith is very important and then I go away and then life will take me every minute. It's very simple. The other example that I want to give you since we have so many professionals in our community but we have many graduates and many probably are applying for, for college or grad school. If someone comes to you and say, one of your children perhaps, and tell you, 
I feel I am the potential of a very great lawyer, right? And this is the argument that they will put in their uh, law school application. I feel I am a very good lawyer, right? All of you would laugh because that does not mean anything. That the admission officer would look at this and say, this is just so funny, right? Because you have to prove yourself to be a potential good lawyer. You have to have done the work before even you apply. Take that this person was admitted and then they go through law school and they're not even able to pass any of their courses. Yeah, you can feel whatever you want, but you are a failure. You should be kicked out of law school. Even if you pass through the classes and you got the law degree, you have to take exams to be accepted in the bar the association. And even there, you have to behave in a certain way. You have to be working as every other lawyer works and to keep up with everything that's happening. Your ethics and your morality is important even after you have passed all these steps. So if this is the case in professional life, why isn't it the case in church as well? Why isn't that asked of us as Christians to commit and to do the work that's necessary to be called Christians? If a disgraced lawyer has done everything and then did not behave in the certain way that it should, he should or she should behave, they are kicked out of the Bar Association. But no one is kicked out of the church because we can come back and repent and change and commit and do the work that is necessary for that. So our, our invitation today is very simple. To be reminded that the life of holiness is for everyone. And since we got the tongue of fire when we were baptized, we are also invited to be like all the saints who have lived through the centuries and who committed their lives, who were focused about how they would live day to day so that the image of Christ that is imprinted in them can reflect to the entire world. This is not someone's 2,000 years ago responsibility. It's the responsibility of everyone who wants to claim that they are Christians and named, named after Christ himself. Because if it was not for us to bring Christ, then who is going to do that?